Okay, we're, this is part two of lecture four. We're going to go ahead and try another practice one for this one. And again, this is imperial and metric converting back and forth. So remember that the sig figs become involved here. So Pike's Peak is 14,110 feet above sea level. What is the height in meters? So meters is again what we want to get to. And if it helps circling the unit, that is fine by me. So we're going to start with what we know, which is 14,110 feet. We're going to convert that to yards, first of all, because that's one of the factors we have. So we know that there are three feet per yard. So that gets rid of our feet as, as a unit. And then we do one meter, because that's what we want. And we know that there's 1.094 yards per meter. So this is a pretty simple conversion. So we take a look and we multiply this out, 14,1110 divided by 3 divided by 1.094, and that gives us 4,299 meters. Now, I know significant figures is going to raise their ugly head here, and you're like, well, we need a one sig fig answer. Well, you can, or you can just leave it as is, because it's not a decimal point number. You can say either 4299 four meters, or you can say 40, uh, you know, 4,000 meters to do it to one significant figure. But personally, I would prefer that you kept it at 4299. Okay, some of the alternate units of measure. Um, this is again, remember I talked about those wonky units of measure in the imperial system. Jules Verne wrote the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. How deep is this in feet? Well, <laughs> here's the fun part. One fathom equals six feet. 100 fathoms is one cable length. And 10 cable lengths is one nautical mile. And three nautical miles is one league. So you would, I would provide you with that information if you were going to actually do that. So let's start with what we have, which is 20,000 leagues. I don't know if that's the abbreviation for league, but that's what I'm going with. Okay, so we know that there's three nautical miles per league. So we'll get rid of the leagues. Oops. Okay, so there's 10 cable lengths per nautical mile. And that there is 100 fathoms per cable length. And that one fathom is six feet. So that gets rid of all of our units except feet. And because we are not changing from the imperial to the metric, again, we're talking, we're only in the imperial system. So there's unlimited, um, unlimited whoosie what's it's, um, significant figures. So when we multiply this all, all across, we get, you ready for this one? 360 million feet. Um, that's 68,182 miles or approximately 2.6 diameters of the earth. So um, obviously you did not go 20,000 leagues under the sea, but it made a really cool title. Okay, so here's multiple units. The speed limit is 65 miles an hour. What is this in meters per second? Well, that means that we need two units, meters and seconds, and we're starting off with miles and hour. So we start off with 65 miles in one hour. And you can convert either to seconds or to uh, meters first. I don't care. Um, the hour is easiest to get rid of, so that's what I go with. So you know that there's 60 minutes in an hour and that there are 60 seconds per minute. 
So that gets rid of our hour. Ooh, that, I flipped those. So let's start over again. I'm going to block that out and start over. Okay, so let's try it again. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Miles in one hour. So one hour over 60 minutes. One minute over 60 seconds. There we go. So now we're in miles per second. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this in miles per second. Now we need to convert the miles to meters. So we have 65 miles because we've gotten rid of those. And we've got seconds in the bottom. And now we're going to do miles to meters. So we know that um, there are 1,760 yards per mile and that there's one meter and 1.094 yards. So we get rid of that, we get rid of that. So now we're in meters per second. When you multiply that all across the board, you get 29.05 meters per second. And remember that it's lowest sig fig, so that's 29 meters per second. Okay, this one I want you to do on your own. So go ahead and pause it. And um, when you think you've gotten the answer, go ahead and write it down. You can get back with me and I'll be happy to go over that with you um, for your answer if you want to meet me during office hours. Let's take a look at this one. This is units in a power. This is a little bit more difficult because you have to remember to convert times the number of units. So we start off with 1,500 um, cubic centimeters. And how many meters cubed is that? Well, you have to do the conversion three times because there's power of three. So you know that there are one meter times 100, over 100 centimeters. And then you have to do that three times because it's a power of three because we're doing cubes. So these three centimeters go off with that one and you end up with 0 0.0015 meters cubed. Okay, so now you're going to try these and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to help you. Okay, so here's some bigger conversions. I know that you can read this. I'm going to go skip right into answering the question, and I want you to try it on your own. Okay, well, I want you to try the second one I'm going to show you on your own. So we have a European meat cheese maker. We've got it in metric. Now we've got to transfer to imperial. This is why it's a pain in the butt to use imperial. So here's how we solve that. We know we start with 2.50 kilograms. And we, I gave you the conversions on the previous slide. So we know there's 10 to the third grams per kilogram. That gets rid of kilograms. Boop, boop. And then we do it in cubic centimeters. So there's cubic centimeters here. And 1.03 grams. That gets rid of that. And then we know that one liter is a thousand cubic centimeters. So that gets rid of that one. 1.06 quarts per liter. So that gets rid of that unit. And then we have two pints per quart and two cups per pint. When we multiply that all across the board, we get 10.3 cups. And again, you need to use the, the lowest significant figure value, so you use 10 cups. Though that probably won't give you as much. Okay, take a look at bigger conversions number two. And again, you're going to try this on your own. 
Um, I will give you a hint. First, you're going to find the mass of ethanol. When you do find the mass of ethanol, um, that will help you um, answer the rest of this question. So again, try it on your own. Come and see me during office hours if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to help you then. Have a good day.